The following program is presented by ProSound and Video. On today's episode of Broward Teen News, we're here in the home of the lightning to find stories in our community. On today's show, Brady highlights one of the base clubs. Andrew informs us about the Black Sky Paradox. We hear some wonderful stories from CCNN Live. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Broward Teen News, Cypress Bay High School Edition. I'm Mario Ojeda. And I'm Samantha Duarte. And we're here to tell you about the plethora of stories in our South Florida community. In our first story, I found a club that might just brighten your day. Here at Club Love Day, organizations join together to do activities, learn, and gain new members. But there's a certain club that can bring sunshine into your day. Oh. Literally, Hope Sunshine is, Hope stands for helping overcome problems effectively. And, but we, we usually serve as a mental health club, just general mental health topics, you know, helping high schoolers deal with whatever stress they may face just because they're high schoolers. Usually what we do in a meeting is we try to have an educational discussion, you know, whether it's very serious topics like uh, depression, anxiety, suicide, or more lighthearted topics like managing school anxiety, managing, you know, managing just what's on your plate. I felt excited when... But there's more than meets the eye when exploring the truth of what this name stands for. So actually it comes from a student who went here who lost his life to suicide. He was actually one of my former students. Um, so his family got involved with the HOPE program that already exists and built it and they changed it to Sunshine. Sunshine was his nickname. He was super outgoing, popular, involved, seemingly had everything going for him. Seemed like he, we called him Sunshine because he was just so much fun and energetic and not the person that you would have expected to have taken their life. And that's part of the reason why we have the club is that you never know. The whole purpose is to give that hope, to give that that positive spin and network. And I think that adding the sunshine kind of gives that a little bit of the positivity and, and the word hope as a name. Hope Sunshine definitely has improved my mental health. You know, it provides stability. We meet every Wednesday and to have that in the middle of each week, just it really helps me get through the week just to have that that consistency and that place that I that'll always be there for me. It's really a space that I love. I love being in and I look forward to being after a difficult day at school, you know. I can always count that I'll, I can go to Hope Sunshine and my friends will be there to comfort me. We never know what anybody's going through. You never know what is happening in somebody's life, so it's always better to be nice <laughs> and understanding. There's no reason to make life harder. We're all just trying to get through it. But also, if any students are looking for a group of people who are just nice people, accepting, warm, um, come to 440 on Wednesdays because that's what we do in here. We literally talk about being the better version of ourselves. Sunshine's memory will always live on with the heroes that help him shine. I'm Mario Heda, CB TV. Many people believe the moon landing was a hoax. One piece of evidence to back this is if you look at the pictures, there's no stars in the sky. This is not because Stanley Kubrick forgot there were stars in space. This is actually because of the black sky paradox. Before I tell you why there were no stars, let me give you some context. In 1955, the space race began. The United States and Soviet Union were competing to see who could get to space first. The United States could have just faked it and won the race to scare the Soviet Union. But that doesn't explain why there were no stars in the photos. The answer is actually really simple. With no atmosphere on the moon, the sunlight is not diffused and it's very strong, meaning from the moon's surface, everything is super bright. For the astronauts to even be able to see, they needed very dark visors built into the helmet. This also meant for the camera to be able to see, they had to turn the image very dark. So the sunlight was so overpowering that you couldn't see any of the stars. Imagine trying to take a picture, but there's a flashlight pointed at the camera. You'd have to lower the exposure to be able to see anything. If they hadn't lowered the exposure, this is what the moon landing would have looked like. This means either the moon landing was real or Stanley Kubrick is just a genius. My name's Andrew Dunham, CBTV. In our lovely community, our reporters found a farm with a deeper message. Let's take a look. Well, 
originally I'm from Buffalo, but I moved here when I was 10 years old. And I come from a farm town. It's a little village called Springville. We have a lot of Amish and we have a lot of farmers. This all started back in 07, where my husband and I had a piece of property in East Fort Lauderdale and we lost pretty much everything. It was the economy, it collapsed. When we lost our jobs, what did we do? We went out and we literally mowed people's lawns. And it was pretty horrific. People were squatting and it, you know, it was a tough, for all of us. You lose everything, it humbles you. And, um, and to be able to come out of it makes you a stronger, better person. So we thought we would take a little piece of property before we lost it to the bank and we would turn it into a farm and garden. We were able to take over the property and create an income for myself and my family. Not only did we have to go back to work, but we were able to create our own little farm and ranch, which allows us to rescue animals that have been abused or neglected. Um, it gives us nine additional acres to grow food. We've been through it more times than I can count in a lifetime. But it makes you stronger and you, know, you rely on your family and you have to rely on yourself. You have to get up the next morning as tough as it is. You put those bootstraps on and you do something that gets you out of bed every day. The sun always comes up. Over the past few weeks, some crazy space events have been happening. What are you talking about? Well, for starters, Gio informs us about how the moon changed colors. Last Thursday, August 31st, 2023, we all experienced a super blue moon. But what does that even mean? What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Giovanna Sheldon, and I'm here to tell you all about the super blue moon. The moon travels around the world in an elliptical orbit. Every month, the moon reaches the closest and furthest point from the Earth. When it reaches the closest point and it's a full moon, that makes it a super moon. Now, onto the blue part. Last Thursday, when I went outside and looked up, I was very disappointed. And so probably were you. When we looked up and we saw that the blue moon wasn't actually blue at all. After I looked into it, the blue moon is never blue, and it has a whole different meaning. The blue moon is the second full moon of a month. The first moon happens at the beginning of the month, and the blue moon happens at the very end. And it only happens on long months, like August. But that's not saying that it happens every long month. It's quite the opposite. Blue moons only happen once in a blue moon. Now that you know that a blue moon isn't actually blue, I'm here to tell you that your dreams about seeing a blue moon can happen. A blue moon can and has occurred before. It happened in 1883, when a volcano called Krakatoa erupted and spread ash into the atmosphere. The ash filtered the red light, turning the moon a slightly blue color. Since you now know all about the blue moon, Keep your eyes peeled for the next one, but that won't be for a while. I'm Giovanna Sheldon, CB TV. A bakery that contains sweet treats and delicious foods is no more important than the man with the talent for it. My last job was a restaurant. I was a manager. They were one of the first restaurants in LA, started serving gluten-free dishes. And I just saw a huge demand from customers um, looking for gluten-free stuff. Because there, are, it's so hard to find. And I want to do something that can help people as well. Just utilizing my experience and talent, uh, cooking, bake, baking uh, food, uh, gluten-free food and baking gluten-free bread and pastries would help some, uh, you know, some of those people who have celiac disease or gluten-free 
intolerance, things like that. Some people doubt that a day can be brightened with just a spoonful of sugar. But Chef Hero bakes to differ. When I talk to my friends uh, about opening a restaurant, a lot of them definitely doubted me because they know it's very hard to you know, keep restaurant in business. I don't know how I overcame, but I, I think I just trusted myself. And if you think it, life is just once, right? And uh, you only have so much time to, to make things happen. I see a lot of customers come in, uh, you know, seeing our, our items get really excited. And you know, that, that always motivates me to just keep working hard and coming up you know, with delicious gluten-free items. Hero cooks a delicious experience as he fights for those who never thought that eating sweets would ever be possible. Reporting for Student Television Network, I'm Drew Van Dam. At the Bay, there's over 100 clubs that students can choose from, one of them being DECA. Brady's here to tell us more about this remarkable club. I'm Daniela Rivero, and I'm one of the chapter presidents for this year. DECA Day is an event that we have every year to introduce our new members to DECA so that they know what the organization is and how we do DECA at Cypress Bay. With DECA Day, they have the opportunity to learn without having to ask people. I know that I'm not super extroverted and outgoing. So with DECA Day, we're giving them all the information that they need to know about the organization and from what we give them, they can decide, oh, like, I like this, or I want to get involved in somewhere else. DECA Day is beneficial to me because it does a lot of the legwork, where as instructors, we can tell people about DECA and what DECA is, but when they hear it from students' perspective and competitors' um, perspective, they get a whole new feel and take, and they can actually make it their own. I would have never thought that out of all the clubs that I started with, DECA would be the one that I stuck with. And so I feel like with DECA Day, some people might not know that they're interested in business or in a club like DECA, but they're still sitting there and learning about something that they might potentially be passionate about and something that might be what they stick with through high school. And it's always crazy to me to think that when we hold DECA Day, like you're looking at over a thousand members and one of those will be the chapter president in four years or in two years. And it's just, it's just amazing to see. Here in South Florida, students are always telling stories about our community. And we here at Cypress Bay have the privilege to shine a spotlight on our very talented friends at CCNN Live. Here are their stories. Spanish is a crucial language here in the melting pot that is the magic city. And Chrissy's Little Beats Miami is helping kids build a passion for Spanish culture as well as teaching them important skills. My purpose of impact is to bring the love for Spanish language, culture, music appreciation, and to nurture early childhood development in a way that is accessible and fun, all rolled up into a, sp into a program that is Spanish and something that I bring to the community. And this program isn't just impacting the kids. Personally, as a mom, I think Christy is a lifesaver. It's, you know, between post-pandemic, having somewhere to go, it's, it's impacted me. And, you know, as the saying goes, it takes a village to bring a, a family together. And Christy is one of the people that has helped me come out of my house, have things to do with the kids, feel safe, come to an environment with like-minded parents. I think it's a great environment. It's helped me tremendously. And for Christy, her work is more than just a business. This is uh, a project that not only is my business, not only is my work, but it's also a part of my heart. And so everything that I do is more than just a music lesson. It's more than just a class. It's something that comes from my heart and it's something that I do with a lot of love. Though her pop-up shop is closing for today, Chrissy will continue to teach kids, help the community, and follow her passion at her next stop. For Season and Live, I'm Nicholas Zavales, reporting. Costa Rica home of rainforests, beautiful beaches, and a hot spot for tourism. That is, until recent years. Han habido muchos más homicidios y mucho más descontrol. The Sinaloa Cartel, a Mexican drug crime syndicate, the biggest in the world, has made its way to the streets of San Jose, the country's capital. Mis papás están muy asustados casi siempre que salgo. 
O sea, muchas veces me prohíben de ir durante la noche porque han habido muchos disparos y muchos eh, problemas así, asaltos. Y entonces sí, se preocupan bastante. The Budding Nation, once seen as a lively place for countries across Latin America, is now a great concern for tourists and citizens. According to Routers.com, the country's murder rate has spiked to an all-time high in the first half of 2023, with a 42% murder rate jump from 2022. Last year's numbers were 656 murders, and these numbers continue to rise. In a recent interview, a tourist who wished to remain anonymous said, quote, I was warned about the dangers of going out alone into the city at night. I usually just hang around the places made for tourism and avoid the nightlife. But the reason for the cartel stay is control and establishing a route. It's the logical route for drug traffic. They go from Colombia all the way to the U.S. through every Central American country in trucks. So they post up in all the countries on the way in order to keep growing and control traffic. And with the Mexican cartel pushing its violence and rule over the Costa Rican streets, residents and tourists alike remain cautious, hoping the country can return to its days of glory. For CCNN Live, I'm Sebastian Broach reporting. Nicole attended a volleyball game of Cypress Bay versus Shamanad Madonna. Here's the highlights. <laughs> On September 5th, the girls' volleyball team faced off against the Shamanade Madonna Lions in a tense match. The Lightning started off the game with an incredible lead, winning the first set with a score of 25 to 9. However, the Lions stepped up their game, keeping the set neck and neck until they took the lead and won the second set with only a two-point difference, 23 to 25. Set three kept the electricity high as the score remained tied up, yet the Lightning managed to take the lead right before a timeout was called. With a series of good defense and kills from number one and number 12, a final hit from number nine won the set for Cyprus, 25 to 18. While the Lions started out the final set with a promising lead, Lightning was quick to catch up. However, a dispute was called over one of the Lions points, calling for a redo, with the Lightning coming out on top. Lightning takes the lead with the Lions close behind, but with over a five-point difference, they couldn't be stopped. Finally, a kill from number 12 ends the set at 25 to 18, with the Lightning winning the game. For CBTV Sports, I'm Nicole Pineros. Sammy, I can't believe you're a senior now. I know, coming back to school hasn't felt real. Well, you're not the only one. Linda went around the Bay asking students some back to school questions. What's up Cypress Bay, my name is Linda Dubrow and today we're gonna be going around the Bay to recap what you guys did this summer. What's your name? Max Glader. Cecilia. Key. My name's Sebastian. Juan. What'd you do this summer? What's your favorite memory? I went to the Dominican Republic. I slept. I went to Italy for four weeks. I went to Spain, Italy. France and Portugal. Nice. I went to Mexico, Costa Rica, and New York. We are here, we are at the Bay. Are you excited to be back? So excited to be back. Woo, I'm so glad to hear that. This summer, um, 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 I played a lot of golf. You're excited to be back? No. What'd you do this summer, Mr. Dunham? Um, let's say I went to teach over the summer to the elementary kids and then I did some weight journey, lost weight journey. Uh, I mostly worked at a job. Where do you work? A uh, dog club. I took care of dogs. <gasps> That's so fun. Oh my god. What do you think the song of the summer was? Song of the summer? Um, um, um I believe it was, um, I guess it goes like na na na. You excited to be back? No. <laughs> Real. What are, your, what are your goals for this year? Our goals for this year are to take it above and beyond in every capacity, Woo! academics, extracurricular, in our, in our personal lives, everything that we can possibly do to make this the best year it will be. Wow, it seems like you guys had an interesting three months. I'm Linda Dubrow, CB TV. Listen. 
Well, that wraps it up here from Cypress Bay. If you want to see more stories like this, make sure to check out the Broward Teen News Facebook page. I'm Mario Ojeda. And I'm Samantha Duarte. See you next time. Routine News was brought to you by ProSound and Video.